Okay, I kind of mixed these sections up because not that this, this part is that important, but we kind of needed to get caught up with labs. We kind of get, this chapter is kind of like two weeks of labs. So, um, and this section is actually more important for the next copy, the next few chapters, six and seven. So that has to do with energy and metabolism. So when we talk about energy and metabolism, we're talking about this conversion of going from sun. We start with the sun, I always love starting with the sun because that is the ultimate source of energy for our planet is our sun. We're going to our producers, which are autotrophs, and then our herbivores, omnivores that eat. The energy is, the arrows are pointing to the energy, not who eats who. We're not saying that my grass eats my omnivores. I'm saying the energy from the grass goes into your omnivores and your herbivores. And then the energy can go like we got some omnivores eating carnivores, but we do have some carnivores, you know, so we're going that both ways there. Either ways, and then we have our carnivores eating our herbivores. And then either way, all of these things here die and or leave waste products. And our decomposers will then take that and break it down and recycle it back for our producers. Okay, there are the recyclers, the ultimate recyclers, which put all this movement of matter and energy back into the, into the cycle. So all living things require energy. Like I said, the sun, it's a source of um, energy for most living things. So we talk about these metabolic pathways. We're going to talk about um, cellular respiration and photosynthesis. And I am not going to candy coat this. The next two chapters, six and seven, will be the hardest chapters of the semester. So this kind of leads into those particular chapters. And so when we talk about these two processes, you guys are very familiar with how plants take in carbon dioxide and water, they give off oxygen and they make sugar. And so this is all our autotrophs up here and then our heterotrophs and basically everything else. We could, we could just say our heterotrophs versus autotrophs here are going to be taking in that food, that sugar, and giving off, making ATP and giving off carbon dioxide and water, which gets recycled back. And so you have this cycle um, between the autotrophs and heterotrophs that are kind of dependent on each other in these two processes, cellular respiration and photosynthesis. To understand this metabolism, we've been talking about ana anabolic and catabolic reactions now for a while now. Um, we talked about how they are both facilitated by enzymes or it would not, things would not be broken down or put together fast enough to support life. So we have those enzymes in there that help with that process of um, anabolism and catabolism. The laws of thermodynamics are my absolute favorite thing to go on and on and on and on about. And I could very easily do so, but you would just be falling asleep. <laughs> so thermodynamics is the study of energy. Energy is the ability to do work. The first law of thermodynamics is energy. And we can use matter and energy. Matter, matter and energy is neither created nor destroyed only transferred or transformed. And so we are moving this energy throughout our system. We are, we've got it from the sun. The sun is getting it from, of course, we, we can talk about nuclear fusion. And so we get our heat and solar radiation. It's going to our plants, it's going to our consumers. We talked about then it's going back to our decomposers. Ultimately it's lost this heat. And of course, waste materials that we cannot use or our plants recycle them. Okay. They reuse them. All right. So the first law of most of you guys have heard of the first law, first law of thermodynamics. We have different types of energy transformations. We have chemical energy where we're taking the energy in the food we eat, which is also potential energy. Uh, but we're talking about that potential energy being stored in the form of chemical bonds, those covalent bonds in this particular sugar and fat. And then we can use that to make ATP, which will then allow us to move around and ride our little bicycles, which is kinetic energy. 
And then when I talked about solar, solar radiation, our light energy being converted to chemical energy and that it is being used to make sugar. And so we're putting that solar radiation, we're basically using that solar energy, right? To put those covalent bonds together in carbon dioxide and water to make sugar in the process of photosynthesis. Thermodynamics is not, um, we talk about transferring energy, not all energy is transferred. We lose a lot of it in either entropy or we lose it in heat. Entropy has to do with the second law of thermodynamics. And that has to do with the amount of disorder. So entropy is how disorganized something is. And so we can look at this solid is nice and organized. And so my entropy is low. As I heat my ice up into a liquid and then eventually go to steam, it gets really chaotic and crazy and disorganized and entropy goes up. So entropy is that measurement of disorganization. Most of our rooms, and mine is right now, very disorganized. Entropy is high. And, to, and generally to oppose entropy, you have to put energy into it, right? I have some great videos here on entropy. Please watch them because they will be so helpful. So right here, you start off with that little drop of red food coloring. So entropy was low. And as it spreads out, we get more disorganized. And so we have our increasing entropy. The universe leans towards entropy being high. Things are naturally going to be disorganized. It takes energy to organize things. And it's more, and if you watch the video, they talk about probability, right? The probability of your room being clean. There's only one way your room can be clean, right? Your clothes folded in your drawers, everything put in their proper location. But there are so many more possible possibilities on your room being messy. My room is never messy in the same way. My socks are never in the same place. My shirts are here and there. I mean, I might have kind of a pattern, but they're never in the exact same place and they're never the same clothes and never, you know, so the probability is astronomical on how many different ways my room can be a mess, but there's only one way my room can be clean. And so this is also a game of probability. For my room to be clean, I have to exert energy. I have to do work to oppose entropy. For my body to stay alive, I have to take in food in order to make ATP to keep my body organized and working properly. If I'm not eating, I'm not making ATP, I die. I have lost homeostasis and I die and my body will naturally break down because it's going to follow the second law of thermodynamics. See, I got off in my tangent about the second law of thermodynamics. I have an entropy video here. If you, if I also have it in the module, but if you hit play on these presentations, then you can hit the link and it'll send you to that video. And it's a very good video on entropy. And it's kind of funny too. And so that is the end of the chapter. We talked about um, the plasma membrane. We talked about diffusion, osmosis, thermodynamics, enzymes. Um, and so this chapter has a lot of different stuff in it. So hopefully, um, again, the labs are gonna help facilitate this, help, look at that, I used the vocab word, help you understand these different concepts. This is more of a conceptual chapter than just me memorization. So hopefully you guys will understand these concepts and be ready to go for your labs and your labs will help you get prepared for your test. And I will see you in the next video.